Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the New Trust Economy. I'm Tracy Hazard. And I'm Monica Profit. And today we're going to address the number one question I seem to get out in public when people hear we have a podcast on blockchain and crypto. <laughs> and that is that, like, I'm thinking about getting into crypto. What do I do? And I don't want to mine stuff. Like that's, yeah. that's oh, I don't want to mine stuff because I don't want my house to blow up. And I was like, okay, right. well, that's a whole nother thing. We'll talk about right. it. Time, right? <laughs> so yeah, I think outside of how to do it, I mean, how to take your money and put it into this unstable thing that might go up or down. Right. You Who know? knows? How do I gamble in digital money? I don't know. <laughs> okay, first of all, I am not an investment advisor. I don't play one on TV. Yep, we have our disclaimer at the front of our intro. And right? We, right? We're just going to tell you the mechanism for doing it. We're not telling you you should do it. That's up right? to you. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, if you should do it, I don't know. It's not, it's not up to me. It's up to you, you and your, uh, your own conscience. That's but, right. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think the ma main entry point for people in the U.S. especially is Coinbase. You go to Coinbase and you set okay. up and, you know, they have to make sure you're who you are, just like at a bank. They want your, you know, information on your identity, your social security number, how to tax you on your gains, stuff like that. So um, that's mostly how people get involved in the U.S. at least. So you go to Coinbase, you set up and then you can buy, I think they now have a handful of different cryptocurrencies on that platform. So there are other platforms that have lots of different cryptocurrencies that you can buy, but to get fiat, to take your dollars and put them into something digital, Coinbase is your entry point and exit point for that. Okay, so, so that seems fairly simple. It's like getting a bank account, it's just getting a digital one. Kind of, um, but sure. getting in and getting out, and if you lose your passwords, if you lose your information, can be really tricky. So um, <laughs> it's like a, it's like getting a bank account, only you want to write everything down on a piece of paper <laughs> and never. Okay, lose so it. running through my mind is like you know those those spy movies you see with with uh, with Swiss bank accounts, and they've got like keys on like you know like actual keys and like yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Think of it that way. <laughs> Definitely. There you and go. And from there, you can go on and you can, if someone says there's some coin that's not on Coinbase, then, you know, you have to find out where that is. And then you're going to start learning about wallets and how to move money from Coinbase to, say, Binance or Polynex and on and on and on. And then on each one of those exchanges, you might have access to other cryptocurrencies that may go up or down, da 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 da. And then it becomes a very big risky game, like as it, as it always is. But um, things things can get more interesting. It's more obscure, but that's when you have to learn about like all the digits in a wallet and make sure you don't copy paste and have a space at the end and where your money, if you send it to the wrong address, it just goes into a digital hole and goes away. That's really <laughs> scary. It can just go away. It's never found again, you know? So you always want to do a little test transaction first of just a few dollars, maybe 10 bucks or 20 bucks that you go, did that really work? Okay, cool. I'll do that again with more. But it can be really, really kind of scary. So, so guys, everyone out there, did you hear that? It's a little wild, wild west. Yeah. So you need to be cautious about how you go in and do this. It's not, yeah. um, you know, I had this interesting, and I think I may have mentioned this on the show, but I met this actress in Hollywood um, and at, an, at a party that I was at. And she, and she said, oh, I have cryptocurrency when she heard we had this podcast. And I said, you do? what made you get into cryptocurrency? And she said, well, I had this money because I did this movie and I ended up with excess money and I wanted to invest it in things. And as I looked around, I felt stupid. And that was such an interest. She's like, I just like, I didn't know enough about real estate and I didn't know enough about stocks and I didn't know enough about any of these things. And it seemed like the old boys network, and that's the word she used, the old boys network like had it all locked up and that there was no way I was going to figure out and learn what I needed to know to be successful there. Wow. But this cryptocurrency thing seemed wild and untamed and like nobody knew anything. Right. So it felt like a level playing field to go into that, even though it was risky, but it felt right? riskier wow. to, her to go into something that seemed like a fixed game. Wow, and I that that's was interesting. such an interesting mindset that yeah. in my mind. I was like, oh, I've been trying to get her to come on the show, but her, you know, she gets a, uh, every time I get her, uh, I get her scheduled, she like gets a, you know, a um, audition or something and she can't come on. So right. I'm like, we've canceled like five times, but I'm still going to try because I thought, 
wow, I just want to pick her brain and hear more. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, wow. but, but you know, that's a really interesting viewpoint here. So it is a little scary and it is a little wild, but there's some fun, in, interesting things going on and things to explore and things to learn. Why not learn from the ground up? Exactly. If I totally agree. You can risk it, right? <laughs> yeah. If you can risk it. Let's not be putting our nest eggs in here. So <laughs> <laughs> unless you can. Ex unless you can. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. So Shoot. interesting. Is there anything else that they should know and be aware of? So besides Coinbase and getting started, like, I mean, if they wanted to take cryptocurrency payments for something, can they still use Coinbase through that? Um, so to take cryptocurrency, yes, you can take it, but you only can take certain ones. You can so only take someone says, ones. I'm going to send you my, you know, Dodge coin or whatever. You can't be like, oh, here's my Bitcoin address. That's not going to work. The Bitcoin address only holds Bitcoin itself. So, mm -hmm. um, and so with Coinbase, can you hold Bitcoin and other types of, of crypto? Like you can hold it in multiple as if you were holding it in multiple foreign denominations. <laughs> Um, you know, you can, you have to, it, but it really, the, every wallet is really specific to the kind of currency or the type of uh, technology it's built on. So it can be really kind of tricky. Um, so you may have to have more than one. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Ah, interesting. Interesting. So, okay. Well, so I hope that answers the questions that we've been getting out there. Um, that, <laughs> that this is how you just do it. You just dive in, try it, go in, get a wallet and get going. Exactly. Yeah, that's how you, that's what you got to do. Okay. I love it. Well, thanks, Monica. I'm so glad you helped enlighten us. So now I have a really clear answer to everyone <laughs> and, uh, because this is, of course, not my side of it. I'm always looking at the blockchain side of the innovation and not necessarily the cryptocurrency. The crypto side. The crypto side yeah, is a little so scary. I mean, it, it, can be, it can be freaky and like you can easily lose money. You can also make it, but you know, you really, I think starting with just diving in, you got to know this is not Crypto is its own animal. It's separate from blockchain. You know? And if you yeah. really want to get into it, most people are using crypto like day traders. So it's not like they're using, um, using crypto like you know, a long-term investment. And if they are, that's great. But a lot of people are in it just to, to like do really small. They want to see things get volatile. And right now it is a little volatile. It goes up and down oh. by... So that's bit. maybe the next good question for us to answer for them is like, now where would they like get good industry information and be able to watch what's going on. Like we go to the wall street journal to watch what's going on in the stock market. Where yeah. do they go? So I think to get to good information, you want to make sure that you can get, you can look at a lot of diverse information and compare and contrast because everybody's got an opinion. It's, you know, this, we're in, here we are on a podcast. We're just sharing opinions. Yeah. So everybody's got them and you can't always just take one person's, you know, like word for it. Yeah. But I mean, seeing what some people have done when they say, this is my track record, this is what I've made, this is why, that's great. I have one friend um, who is like, oh, well, if Bitcoin goes above, if Ethereum, which follows Bitcoin, goes above this, this level, this is like a, a resistance level. If it goes above 140, it's, it's going to keep going up until it's over 160. But if it breaks 165, it's going to go up at least to you know, 180. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, no, no this, is, this is always what it does. Does. These are the points because there's not volume in trading, and he has this whole, and he shows me like a graph, and it's like, see this, this is why this thing happens and that thing happens, and I'm like, how do you know this? And he's like, <laughs> that's all he's done for seven years is just stared study that and studied it. Yeah. So some people really have, and when they, it can be boring to some people. I think you know, have I ever bought the euro thinking about you know how it's going to go up or down? No, I just go, oh, is it a better deal right now or not? I don't know. Is the dollar very strong? I still have to go to your, I'm going to Europe. So it doesn't matter. I have so to you're going to need it. So <laughs> it just is what it is. Right. But in cryptocurrency, I think there's, there are more opportunities to use that volatility. It's like a foreign exchange. It's like Forex on steroids. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I do want to remind our listeners though, that I did an interview with Gary Leland, crypto podcaster, and he has like four different shows. And one of them is a daily show that has like five to 10 minutes where he talks about something going on in the cryptocurrency news. Cool. So he just discusses it. that. So, you know, that might be a really great second source, as you were saying, to get some different viewpoints out there. Well, he's going to discuss what's being stated in the news. So you'll at least hear what's going on in the news. And then you'll hear his viewpoint because he's been in it for a while. He's been in it about five years. So, oh, cool. yeah. So he's got a good viewpoint as well. So, anyway, offer that up and please listen to the episode with Gary Leland because it's really interesting. Um, he's quite an amazing podcaster on top of it. So. <laughs> 
Um, so anyway, well, thanks, Monica. I'm so glad you kind of updated everybody and gave us a little a little direction on how to get started and how to look into things. I'm happy um, to. At all, at everyone out there, newtrusteconomy.com. Send us a message. Go to social media at newtrusteconomy. Send us a message and ask us these questions. Nothing is too basic. We, w- if we need to step back and, and break it down again. We're happy to because we don't want to leave people behind here. I mean, our goal is to sort of translate what's going on in the, in, in the industry and what's happening around there. And, and look at that from, a, from my viewpoint, from an innovation and a business perspective. Monica's looking at it from a financial, real estate, from all of these types of market perspectives, which is really interesting as well. So, you know, we're trying to put perspective on these things, but if we're missing out on like basic understanding, we got to know that so we can help you. And then exactly. also just want to remind everyone, Monica wrote a book called Blockchain 101, if you didn't realize <laughs> that. Um, and so if you really do want some basics, go download it. It's on Amazon, yeah. on our website. It's yep. on economy.com and it's on Monica Profit's website as well. So there you go. Yeah. So, thanks for the plug, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thanks everyone for listening to the New Trust Economy. I'm Tracy Hazard. And I'm Monica Profit, and we'll catch you next time on the New Trust Economy. Thanks, you guys.